presence of God in Christ. Oh, oh. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let me see. Jesus. What can y'all say? The day I got established in the truth that I was the righteous of God in Christ, I was a single man, but up until that time, fornication and all of that was a problem. Because I was big that way because of me. But the day that we got established in me and I'm the righteous of Christ, I can look at you and say, girl, you look good, but I can't afford it. Savage that I am the righteousness of God in Christ, and when you are savage in that, the stuff that used to trip you up over and over and over and over no longer has authority over you. Why? Because now I'm established in the fact that I am the righteous of Christ, and if I am the righteous of Christ, I do righteous things. Amen. I wasn't gonna share that, but I didn't want y'all to think I see it in some manner. But I was just like you. Listen to this. God is not talking to you. When he says, you, your ways are not my ways. And your thoughts are not my thoughts. He was not talking to you. In verse 6 and 7 in Isaiah 55, he's talking to the wicked. And he's talking to the unrighteous. And if you are born again, I'm going to tell you what happened. When Adam sinned, there was a disconnect from the ways and thoughts of God. There was a disconnect. In fact, God had to ask Adam, where are you at, son? I don't feel you. I don't sense you anymore. Where are you? That was a disconnect. And I'm here to tell you, sin is a disconnect. Sin disconnects us from the things of God. Even when you are in Christ and you are born again, if we sin, guess what? There is a broken fellowship. They say you lost your salvation, but you lost fellowship. Why? Because sin separates us. And sometimes we run from God because we say, man, I am messed up. God said, listen, don't run from me, run to me. But you can never know somebody, even your children, when they disobey and they done something wrong, they go hide. Oh, yeah. My kids, when they were real little, they messed up. I couldn't find them. I said, what are these kids at? I know they didn't done something. Yes. They go out. Yes. That's the same thing Adam did. Adam went yes. here amongst the trees. Uh -huh. God said, Adam, where are you? Yes. Oh, yeah. Where are you? God knew where Adam was, but God wanted to make sure Adam knew where he was. Uh -huh. He said, son, you're out of position. Yes. Sin has disconnected them. So let me tell you something. I'll close with this. And when Jesus came, I'm going to read this scripture. When Jesus came, he came to reconnect us back yes. to God. Yeah. All right. Not only did he reconnect us back to God as a family, he also reconnected our thinking yes. back yes. to God. And yes. now we can think the thoughts of God. Yes. Why? Because now we are one with him. Yes. All right. That's why impossibilities do not exist yes. in the mind of a child of God. If God Absolutely. says, I want you to do this, we never consider whether it's possible or not. Yes. 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 One of the things I had to, one of the hardest things I had to get over to, to some of the people that, that, that praise God, I, that, that I got to convince that. But whenever you have a void reading, I said, God said, do this. I don't know if we have to find it. I said, he didn't ask if we had to find it. Well, he said, do it. Thank you. He said, do it. Because listen, as you go, God will begin to manifest the finances of that you need. As you go and you obey him, there's no such thing as impossible. Right. Let me tell you where that crazy thinking came from. That crazy stinking thinking where it says when God tells you to do something, God, that's not possible. Let me tell you something. If God ever told you to do something and you look at it like, wow, there's no way that God's in it. <laughs> if God tells you to do something, there's no way you can do it on your own. God is in it. Any vision God gives you that you can do yourself, it ain't done. Otherwise, you don't need him. You don't depend on him. If you can do it yourself, that's something you came up with. Whatever God gives you, it's something to say, God, I got to have you. I know God, you said I can do it. 
And I'm going to tell you something. There is no impossibilities with God. That's right. Romans chapter 5. So pastor, let's get up out of here. Okay, here we go. Keep going. Getting ready to go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm getting ready to go. Getting ready to go. Romans chapter 5. Where did this stinking thinking of impossible come from? You got Romans chapter 5? Amen. Look at verse 12. And while we're reading Romans chapter 5, verse 12 through 19, let your mind go back to Genesis because this is what happened. Romans chapter 5, verse 12. Wherefore, as by one man's sin entered into the world, and death by sin. So wait a minute. The moment sin entered, Death in it. So that's why I can show you there was no eating of the rabbits and the chickens in the Garden of Eden. Because there was no such thing as death. Let's keep reading. Y'all know me up and working. Pastor, I'm having my ribs. I ain't telling you to have no ribs. Enjoy your ribs. Just pray on it first. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Wherefore, as by one man sin into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. So wait a minute, Pastor, I have, yeah, you sinned because yeah. you were in Adam. Yes. The Bible says in Genesis, when God breathed into Adam the breath of life, it doesn't say it in the Hebrew. It doesn't say the breath of life. It says God breathed into Adam the breath of lives. That in every human being, Adam was the pattern son, every human being was in Adam. So that's why you were born a sinner, even though you came to this world not doing anything. You were born that way. Yeah. Sound like song. Praise God. Verse 13. For unto the law sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed where there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned at the similitude of Adam's transgression. I mean, even though they hadn't done anything. Who did, now, this is what I like. Adam, who is the figure of him that was to come. Yes. Adam was a type of Jesus. Right. Walking this earth, taking dominion, taking control, doing things, and every human being was in Adam, but Adam was a type of the one, a figure of the one that was to come. Right. Y'all get that? Yeah. Adam was Jesus, yeah. a figure of Jesus walking this earth. But here's the difference. If Adam would obey God and not sin, this whole world right now would be populated with righteous sons and daughters of God, because that was God's plan. All right, now. That Adam and Eve would produce righteous sons of God and daughters and leave the garden. Yeah. Let me show you something. It wasn't God's plan for them to stay in the garden forever and ever. That's where you start. And every righteous son and daughter of God, everything flows from the garden. Yeah. And that's what the kingdom of God is. Everything starts in the Father's house and flows out into yeah. the world. Yeah. Right. Let's keep reading. Verse 15. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one man, of one, excuse me, many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, had abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. Yeah. For if by one man's offense, talk about Adam, Amen. death reigned by one, much more, they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Amen. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one disobedience, Many remain sinners, so by the obedience of one, Jesus, shall many be made yeah. righteous. Yes. Amen. Amen. When Adam sinned, yes. he brought us all under death. He brought
brought us all under slavery. He brought us all under condemnation. He brought us all under those things. But guess where Jesus came? Which was the figure of him that was to come. When Jesus came, he connected us back to God. Yes. One man messed us up, another man got us out of it. Yes. Can I tell you this? And I say when God breathed into Adam, he breathed in him the breath of lives. Every human being was in Adam. Guess what? When Jesus came to this earth, guess what? The moment he died in that ground, every human being that receives him got up with him. Yes. Guys, we got to close. Okay, let me close. Just write the scripture down. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16. It simply says, we have the mind of Christ. Yes. Where did we get the mind of Christ? That's why you gotta stop all this impossible thinking. Baby, you have the mind of Christ. Yes. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. You have the mind of Christ. The day you see Jesus Christ as your Lord, you got his mind. Yes. Just because you got his mind, that doesn't mean you know how to use his mind. Yes. Amen. Just because some people have a mind, that doesn't mean they know how to use it. Amen. Just because you have the mind of Christ, that doesn't mean you know how to use the mind of Christ. Unless you're connected to this word, you will not know how to use the mind of Christ. Listen to this. Jesus brought life. He brought healing. He brought prosperity. He brought it all through his sacrifice. And guess what else he brought? He brought to end to impossible thinking. With God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. You can have whatever God says you can have. Why? Because nothing is impossible for you. That's right. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So, Pastor, what do I need to do? Start thinking the thoughts of God. That's right. Last scripture, promise this last one we close. <laughs> Some people told me to keep going, but I'm hoping to close. Because I have several more things to talk about on this, but this scripture right here, we're going to close this scripture. Because I'm telling you, it's time now for us to start speaking yeah, that's right. the word of God out of yeah. our mouths. Yeah. Yeah. Because we have been reconnected to the mind of God. Yeah. And when you've been connected to the mind of God, you don't see possibilities. You don't see limitations. All you see is opportunities for God to yeah. Yeah. All right. I never see impossibilities anymore. When something seems impossible, all I say now, nah, that's an opportunity for God to move. I don't know how we're going to get it done. I'll tell people in the board meeting, I don't know how we're going to do it. I don't know how he's going to meet the need, but he's going to meet the need because he told us to do this, and he told me never consider whether it's possible or not, and never preach anything that I think you guys just accepted. Sometimes you got to hear some stuff that's going to stretch you. You got to hear some stuff saying, God, Say, God, that's what I want to do. That's what I want to be. But God help me. Because if you want to hear stuff that's possible, what's going to stretch you to step out and believe God? The juiciest fruit are always out there on the land. God is stretching. God is stretching some of you today to get out of this possible thinking and start thinking in the realms of impossibilities. Because that's where God is in the realm of impossibilities. Because baby, if God told you to do it, it is possible. Now, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17. We're going to read to verse 24. And this is how you begin to change your thinking. To start thinking the way God wants you to think. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17. You know, so it says, this I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, yeah. in the vanity of their mind. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Who being past fear have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work uncleanliness with grief. Stop right there. Well, so go back to that, go back to that last scripture, verse 19. 
That's who God is talking to. Right there. Yes, absolutely. When he says, your thoughts are not my thoughts. Yes. Your ways are not my ways. Yes. Those that work unto a lasciviousness, to work on cleanliness with greediness. Yes. God says, you can't think, guess what? If you're going to be greedy, you can't think like that. That's right. Amen. 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 If you're going to be greedy, you can't think like that. Amen. God doesn't think greedy. God thinks in abundance. Yes. There's a difference between greedy and having abundance. Yes. Because greedy, you can have abundance, but you keep it to yourself. Yes. But to have abundance, you think, okay, oh, God, who can I get? What can I get? How can I get? Yes. Because God wants to use you as a resource to get it through you. So God, I say, God, make me a paymaster. Make me, I want to give it out of God. Yes. Sometimes when, when the money seems a little slow, I don't get depressed because I don't have, I, I don't get depressed, period. But what bothers me is that I don't have it to give. Right. Like I like to. Yes. I yes. say, God, listen, open up some channels so that I will have to yes. give. Yes. I love it. I love to give. Me too. It is better to give than receive. Amen. But every time that God even lets you receive some stuff. Amen. 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 Oh, yeah. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Verse 20. But ye have not so learned Christ. Mm -hmm. If so be that you have heard him and have been taught by him yes. as the truth it is, is in Jesus. Jesus. Oh, amen. amen. You want to know how you be taught by him? Number one, you got to pray. Yes. yes. Spend time in the presence of God. Yes. And then open your word. Yes. Because every time I open this word, I kid you not, brother and sister, it's like I'm sitting at the table on, with Jesus. Jesus. 